Now, I want to say something. Remember, I told you I always do all of my needle changes, all of my yarn changes at six o'clock. So, there's where I would have normally started my working yarn. Wait, say that again. You start all of I your... start all of my yarn changes, all of my needle changes here at six o'clock. Okay. So normally this would have been over here. Oh, I see. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. But okay. You let, me, let me do this. Gotcha. That's my waist yarn. Okay. Here comes <laughs> my sock. Okay. Now this is a very thin yarn. Okay, so it's going to look kind of lacy as I'm set up for a thicker yarn. Could you walk through how you, how you don't need a stitch drop when you put new yarn on? Drop in. Oh, I figured that. Like that. I figured that. Out. Mm -hmm. Put my finger in and just go. Have you got the two threads on one needle or one yeah. for two threads on one needle? No, nope. I cross over and I just screwed up. So here is my start. So let's say that's my waist yarn. It's cut. Okay. okay. Here comes my working yarn. I'm going to start and I'm going to need three quarters of a turn because I'm going to stop my yarn carrier at nine o'clock. So the reason that I do that is because of the offset angle of the river. When you put the river on, If the yarn carrier is here, I can't start my ribbon until here, see? So what I do is I start, stop my yarn carrier here, there's at six o'clock to put needles in, see? So this is the offset based on the river tappet plate. I'm still doing all of my changes here at six o'clock but I stopped my yarn carrier here. Sorry. So the first thing I did was that first three quarters of a row, stop. That's my first row. Even though I've only done three quarters, I count that as row one, okay? Now I'm gonna do second row. Two, stop at nine, this is off. There's my two rows. So now I'm going to take my weights off. And I'm going to lift the first row up onto the second. It's right there. There's where I started, see? There's the bar between the stitches of that first row. And I'm going to lift it up onto the needle of the second row. Lift the bar between stitches, right there. See it? I'm gonna lift it up onto the needle of the second row. And I'm gonna start working around. And I'm gonna follow myself with my yarn carrier. As I'm doing this, as it comes around here, it's gonna lock these stitches, right? That's actually a third row. The third row locks them. When I get back around to nine o'clock, I've done all of this, locked it all in, I stop there, now I put my river on, and I start my needle changes right here, right after where it locked. Okay? And then I continue. Does that, when you're transferring that through off, does that get very tight? A little bit, not greatly tight. See, right here, there it is. What I've got right now is two yarns on the same one because I fed my waist yarn in, but you'll notice it lifts up real nice and easy. See? But notice I'm putting my finger on here. If I don't, it's gonna try to bounce or my needle's gonna bounce. I'm holding the needle down. 
There's the last of my little waist thing. So there's the second stitch. There's the first one. See, that's the tail of my waist right there. Now I'm doing regular one. So there's the second row. There's the first row. I lift up on. See it? Use that on everything. Huh? So you use this on everything. I either, yeah, I do all hung hems. I either do a big hung hem or I do a two row hung hem okay. on everything. Okay. Pick up that sock right there that's on that leg mm -hmm. down there. That's a 10 row hung hem. Okay. Where's my sample? Somebody had the sock with the two row hung hem. Somebody was walking around with it. That sock on that leg and that sock are made exactly the same way. Exactly. The only difference is the number of rows in between where I hang. Mm -hmm. On this one, there's no rows between where I hung, and on that one, there's 20 rows between when I hung. But it's done exactly the same way. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's as soon as I have finished locking these two rows that are hung, when this follows around behind me, it locks it. It gets around here. It's locked from here to here. But this is already locked. So I put my river on and I start my needle changes right here where it's already locked. See? I'm working in a spiral and I'm thinking spirals. I'm thinking one quarter turn ahead of myself in the spiral. I'm planning ahead by one quarter turn. And that one quarter turn is determined by the offset angle of the tappet plate. That's what I'm afraid of. It's going to take me a year to figure out where it goes. Okay. Well, and we're at the beginning of on the, the tappet plate. Plate. Okay. The river, yeah, or river yeah. there's my river stop okay. right there. Yeah. Yeah. See it? And it's marked by blue stuff. Well, there's also a blue mark on my river. Yeah, right there. And I can yeah. visually just line it up and drop it down. Yeah. See, it's locked right there. Yeah. My tappet plate rotates in the opposite direction until it hits the river stop right. or the drive pit. Okay, so this one goes in this way, this one goes in this way. They're actually going in the same direction if you think about it. Because the arm is what's moving, going around. Yeah. And it then catches the tappet place and goes. So okay? the, the point of this, oops, sorry, the point of this arrow is the beginning of the tappet place. No, oh, right here. Oh, right there? Oh, oh. Okay. Because the tappet plate's going to go this that way. way. So the point See, watch, the tappet plate goes that way. Okay. So, so my first river needle is going to go in right there. Yep. Right there. So then do you use your spring extended to do the exchange or are you nope. changing them the way you usually do? I exchange exactly the way I usually do. Okay. All I do is I pick a needle up. I got to watch this. Right. And with my fork, I pick up the spring, release the butt. It, it, is, it didn't work for me. Okay. It takes a bit of pressure. Mm. Pull down, engage one hook into the hook of the other one. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Yeah. See it? Yeah. Lift up. It's already so last, it's locked, so there's only one stitch. So that's a little difficult, okay? The principle behind this needle exchange is the beauty of a latch hook needle. If I pull this needle this way, it closes the latch mm -hmm. and will slide right off the end, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. Mm -hmm. 
if I have this one and I hook this one, it's, slide right on. it slides off one and, and right onto the other. That's all I'm doing. Okay. okay? I put a river needle in, I release the butt of the cylinder needle <laughs> until I'm getting tired. Mm -hmm. Release the butt of the cylinder needle till it's free. Mm -hmm. Then I pull down and I hook one hook into the other hook. And then I just let the latch transfer it from one needle to the other. Okay. To go into reverse the other way, you put a cylinder needle in, bring the river needle out until it releases, hook, hook into hook. Oh, that one closed on me. Got to do it open hook to open hook. Yeah. And lift up. And it just drops over this one onto the other one. It's just like taking two needles and hooking them together, and you can go back and forth and back and forth, and the yarn will pop from one needle to the other. That's all I'm doing. Okay? So, two row hung hem. Everybody gets confused with this idea when I talk the difference between doing six o'clock and nine o'clock. I first do three quarters of a turn, but it went over one on my row counter. So I count that as one because this is where I do the needle change, but the yarn carrier is here at nine. So I actually, that's one, that's two, but I'm doing my work here. And that's what confuses everybody. Yes, I've done two and a quarter. You've done two and a quarter. You've done two and then you're here. Nope, it is one, two, one Now we're here. here, yeah. So you actually do, Take it from here, continue knitting over to there, and then put your river on. But I've already hung the hem. That's okay. That's fine. Okay. Yep. Okay. Just drive around another half a turn, and you'll be ready to put your river on. Does that make sense? I'm going to have to watch the YouTube video. Okay. I'll walk through it again. No, 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 no. Remember that I do all of my work here at six o'clock. So, you're, so still, you're still gonna hang a quarter of Yep, I still have to hang three quarters of the way around. But you're starting to rid as you go. Nope. No, when you nope. Over here, it's I stop. I haven't locked this right. one quarter, but this stitch is locked from the previous row, right? Right. So I can put a ribbon there. And then as I go along like this, my yarn carrier is following behind me, locking the stitches behind me until it gets to here. Now it's finished, now it's ribbing. It's a spiral, I'm, I'm actually behind myself by one quarter turn because of the offset of the tap of plate. I just, to yeah, get all this yeah I, get, I, wor I work around out of here, and then I come around, and then I work over here. The reason is because, see, I can't work over here because these needles are still under the, the cams, right? These are still under the cams, they'll catch. And it should, must be harder to work over these, this way than towards hmm. It's easy, watch, see, this. I can see them. Can you see them better? Yeah, see? I'm, I'm looking right at them. Why are working back here? Because I'm, right now I'm working here around. No, no, no. In the first place. The because first I start place. all of them here. I always start there no matter what. Even if it's easier to see them over there, I always start and stop at my 6 o'clock. It's my standard my habit whether you do it if you want to start the yarn carrier here and do your thing over here at three that's up to you just to figure out what is your standard and do what your standard is no no it's the best point it's literally on a grinder 
to grind a point onto it, and then I took it and I just put it over a piece of metal and I just went and bent it over. And then I heat treat it. Well, this is the then I heat treat part. It. This is it helps you hang on to it. Yeah. Because I'm always in okay. the long It's way. the bend. Yeah, it's the Which bend. makes it so easy. Have you noticed I've always had that in my hand? I even walk around with it. When I'm tilt making, there's a thimble on this finger. And I walk around with it all the time. You know why it's on that finger? It's the British method, but then you can do this. Kilt long and prosper. I think he wants to go. So I think I put some fire on eBay. Possible. That I was going to bring a no, low no, counter. No, no, no. Yeah, something you could buy on eBay that was yeah. low counter. Yeah. So micro, I was going to come micro switch. Micro yeah. Switch. My wife is supposed to bring okay, one when she comes it. back. Okay. This ain't it. This is the okay. Arrowbacher. That's called a bail counter. Okay. And if you put a bail counter on, you have to have something which no, will no, trip no, the lever. No, 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 okay. On my original Laguerre, on my original auto knitter, I had just stuck. And this roller wasn't there. It was just this arm. And it was mounted sideways, and I just put a uh, piece of surgical rubber on it. And the surgical, the, the drive thing would come by, hit the surgical rubber, and trip it, and it would be able to go either way because of the rubber bends. So it, when it goes this way, it doesn't count. It only counts in the forward direction. So it would click, 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 not click, 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 not click. So it's a digital counter with micro switch. Anybody got a computer with a browser up? You can pull up eBay. So this is this is one one. That looks great. And this is the first time I've ever been able to do it without breaking it. Yeah. So that looks great. That's it. That's the that's the finished edge for a one one. You can, yeah. Except you just did one extra row. Okay. That's it. You just did I, one extra row. I read the booklet over and over, but until I saw it, all of a sudden it clicked. Mm -hmm. so it was like, yes, that's the problem. That it was in the way. Yeah. So thank you for for walking through it because I needed it visually. I understand. Anytime anybody in this class needs to see anything again, call me on Skype or message me on Facebook. We will turn on webcams and we will have video mentoring. Lovely. For the rest of your life. <laughs> or the rest of mine, yeah, because I may die next week, okay? You want something? <laughs>